Ciao everyone and welcome to a new episode of Learn Italian Zero to Hero. Today we'll learn how the linguistic phenomenon of apocope impacts Italian. Ready? Let's start! Troncamento or apocope, truncation or apocope in English, is the suppression of a vowel, a consonant or a syllable at the end of a word. I repeat, vowel, consonant or syllable. Keep this in mind because it will be fundamental to understand how to tell apart apocope from a lesion in the next video. For example, we say amor proprio and not amore proprio. In other words, apocope is a linguistic shortcut that makes speech more fluent and smooth. But how do you signal the apocope? We learned in the previous video that a lesion is signaled by the apostrophe. But what about the apocope? Well, it can be quite tricky, but the apocope is signaled by the absence of graphic signs. Thus, we will not have either an apostrophe or an accent. This is the rule. No apostrophe, no accent, nothing. But, and that's a big but, Italian can be a tricky language. So we have exceptions. The apocope requires the apostrophe in the following cases. When poco, little and modo are truncated. So we'll write and say po instead of poco and mo instead of modo. In some interjections, so we'll write and say be, well, instead of bene. To, take, instead of tieni. Last, with the second person singular of the present imperative of certain verbs. So, we'll write and say va, go, instead of vai. Da, give, instead of dai. Di, say, instead of dici. Fa, do, or make, instead of fai. Sta, stay, instead of stai. On the other hand, the apocope requires the accent when the word piede, foot, becomes pie, mainly in poetry and certain expressions. Among the most common, we have pie di pagina, page footer, a pie pari, in with both feet, ad ogni pie sospinto, at every step, a pie fermo, with still foot. Besides the aforementioned exceptions, you might find some others, mainly in literature. Of course, I can't mention all the possible exceptions, thus I name the most common. So, in case of doubt, I encourage you to check a dictionary such as the one available on the website of Treccani, link in the description. Now that the concept of apocope is a bit clearer, Let's see how we use it since, in Italian, apocope is mandatory in some cases, forbidden in some others, and optional in all the remaining ones. Apocope is mandatory in the following cases. First, with the indefinite article uno, masculine a. For example, we don't say and write uno amico but un amico, the friend. With the indefinite, alcuno, nessuno, and ciascuno. For example, we don't say and write alcuno amico, but alcun amico, no friend. Not nessuno amico, but nessun amico. Not ciascuno amico, but ciascun amico. Each friend. Third, with the adjective buono, good, bello, beautiful, santo, saint, and quello, that. For example, we don't say and write buono anno, but buon anno, happy new year. Not bello tempo, but bel tempo, nice weather. Not Santo Raffaele, but San Raffaele, Saint Raphael. 
not quello libro, but quel libro, that book. Number four, with some titles, mainly masculine, indicating social position or profession when they precede a person name. For example, we don't say and write Signore Mario, but Signor Mario, Mr. Mario. Not Professore Bianchi, but Professor Bianchi, Professor Bianchi. Not Ingegnere Rossi, but Ingegner Rossi, Engineer Rossi. Not Dottore Ferrero, but Dottor Ferrero, Dr. Ferrero. Not Cavaliere Bianchi, but Cavalier Bianchi, Knight Bianchi. Not Frate Cristoforo, but Fra Cristoforo, Brother Cristoforo. And not Suora Gertrude, but Suor Gertrude, Sister Gertrude. Last, in some fixed expressions such as Amor Proprio, Self Love, Ben Detto, Well Said, Mal di testa, headache, or qual è, which is. On the other hand, apocope is forbidden in front of words that start with S followed by a consonant. X, Z, PS, or GN. So, for example, We don't say and write un stadio, but uno stadio, a stadium. Not un xilofono, but uno xilofono, a xylophone. Not un zaino, but uno zaino, a backpack. Not un psicologo, but uno psicologo, a psychologist. Not un gnomo, but uno gnomo, a gnome. However, this rule does not apply to buono, titles indicating social position or profession, and fixed expression, for they are fixed by definition. So, for example, we can say Signor Stefano. That said, Every time apocope is not mandatory nor forbidden, we can pick what we prefer. For example, it's common to apply the apocope to the adjective grande, big, great. For example, un gran signore, a great gentleman, or una gran dama, a great dame. Or some toponyms, such as Val di Susa, Pian del Voglio, or Ca del Sole. In conclusion, I perfectly understand how many issues the apocope can cause, mainly due to its similarities with the Elysian. Thus, hoping to be helpful, in the next video I'll share some tips and tricks on how to tell apart these two linguistic phenomena. As far as concerns this video, if you have any doubts or feedback, the comment section is waiting for you. Also, feel free to share what Apocopes gave you issue or caught your curiosity. Grazie for watching and... Arrivederci!